Hey everybody, my name is Michelle and today we're going to do my November reading wrap up. I am pretty sure that November has been my best reading month of the entire year. I finished 11 books which is insane but not only did I finish 11 books like a lot of those books were very big and there was like fantasy and historical fiction and all sorts of different genres and it was just such an amazing reading month. I enjoyed myself so much with reading. I read the most amazing books. I also read some books that I liked a little bit less, but nothing that I truly hated. And I never do page counts, and I also haven't like counted the pages this month, but I'm pretty sure that if I did, that this one would have been the biggest of the entire year. So I think this is just my best reading month of 2019. Of course, December still has to come, but um, yeah, it's just so far, this has been my best reading month, and I'm so pleased with it. So I have 11 books to talk about so um, let's just get started with this video and then I'm going to tell you all about the books that I read in November. So normally I do my reading wrap ups uh, in chronological order but today I'm not going to do that because the first book that I want to talk about is actually the last book that I finished this month but because today is the uh, actual release day of this book I thought it would be fitting to just do it first you know and also I really want to talk about it and also I think a lot of people might be interested in this book but yeah a book that I've already finished even though it has only just come out um, is Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Adeyemi. I've already read this because I found a very early copy just lying around in a Dutch bookstore. Um, it was just sitting there. I was so shocked but I got it like a week and a half early. So that's why I've already finished it um, in case you're wondering. But yeah, I've read the long-awaited sequel to Children of Blood and Bone. And this book series is a fantasy story. It takes place in an African inspired fantasy land and it's about this evil monarchy, this evil king uh, who suppresses all the people who used to have magic. They don't have magic anymore because it has been taken away but the people who were supposed to have magic have like white hair and are called magi and they're very much suppressed and at the beginning of the first book Children of Blood and Bone uh, a girl named Zili, a magi, um, is going on this quest to bring magic back and there's also a runaway princess and a uh, prince that is chasing them so yeah that's sort of the general idea of the story so this is the second book of course I cannot say anything about the plot of the second book because of course I'm not going to spoil anything and what I thought of children of virtue and vengeance um, it's sort of hard to explain because I have so many conflicting and complex feelings towards this book overall um, what I liked about it it's still an epic adventure I still love that um, because that's sort of the same as with the first one. The writing is still amazing. There are still so many interesting and compelling characters. I love the world. I love the sort of magic system. It's a good YA fantasy. It's so interesting to read about. Of course, there are some standard tropes uh, in this series, but it is well done. And it's just, there's a reason why the first book was so popular. The second one also has those good qualities. But then there were also some things about this book where I wasn't 100% certain about, uh, mostly with some of the plot points. Again, I cannot really say much about it. Um, the only thing I can say without spoiling things is that it felt a bit repetitive, like certain things. Also with the characters, some things that happened with them or some of the actions that were taken, I was also not completely sure about. Um, the thing is I really cannot talk about those things without spoiling things. But that's why I'm also going to do a spoilery discussion video for Children of Virtue and Vengeance. Of course not yet because uh, nobody has read the book at this point. Um, it's only just come out but later, uh, not too much later, I will do a spoilery discussion for this one so I can talk about all the things that sort of bothered me in more detail. Overall, I found it very hard to rate this book. I gave it four stars because, I don't know, the first book is just so dear to me, but at some points I just really wasn't certain about it. But three stars felt too low and then four stars, I don't know. I think I'm keeping it with four stars because overall I still think it's an amazing series. There's just, there are a couple of things that stood out to me that I really need to talk about and I will do that later. As soon as that video is online, I will uh, leave a link to it down below, whatever. Um, so yeah, you can look forward to that. I don't know, but yeah, I have a lot of feelings about this book. Oh yeah, and then also I almost forgot, but I also reread the first book, Children of Blood and Bone, before I read Children of Virtue and Vengeance. This is why I normally do my wrap up in chronological order, because now it's getting all confusing, but... <laughs> Um, the thing about Children of Blood and Bone, I've talked about it many times last year. I really love this book. Um, on a second 
reread or like a first reread. I listened to the audiobook. I wasn't the biggest fan of the audiobook. I don't know why, but it just, it sort of, it was hard for the audiobook to capture my attention. Maybe I just wasn't in the right mood. And with this reread, I also noticed some flaws that bothered me a bit more with the book than last year. But overall, I still gave it five stars because it's just such a fun book, such an epic adventure, and that's what I love about it. Then next book that I finished in November is also a new release, and it is Detail by Neil Schusterman. So this is the long-awaited third and final book in the side series, which is a sort of dystopian series where uh, basically all problems have been solved and death no longer exists. Everything can be cured, but there are these sites who are trained to kill people and they are the only people who are allowed to kill other people. And that's like the general premise of the uh, book series. But of course, there's a lot more to it. And especially with the third book, um, yeah, we've gone a long way since the first one. So the third book came out. Um, I've heard a lot of people being a bit disappointed by it, which I can understand because I can understand some of the critiques of this book. But overall, I really loved the toll. Just to get those points of critique out of the way, um, I do think there were some characters that didn't get enough page time or screen time. I wished we would have seen them more. And I also think the book was a bit too long. Some things could have been shorter. Some things dragged on a bit. But overall, I didn't really mind it all that much because this book is such an epic ending to this series. I loved it. I had the best time reading it. I actually read it mostly during a reading vlog, which I will leave a link to down below in the description box if you want to see more of my initial reactions. This book has some very intense scenes and some really exciting things that are happening and I loved it and I was just caught up in it and I love this book series so much. I love everything about it. Overall, I was happy with how things ended. There were some things that I would have liked to see or would have liked to see differently. Um, but you know, overall, I was just happy with it. I don't have any grudges towards this final book. I really enjoyed it, but I can also understand why some people might not have liked it as much as the first two. But I was just, I was blown away by it. I loved everything that happened or well, not like everything that happened, but it's just, it's a fun, not fun. <laughs> I'm not doing a very good job of explaining myself, but it was just such a roller coaster ride. The entire series is, and I loved this final book, and I just gave it five stars because I don't care. I loved it. It was amazing. Then, for something completely different, uh, I listened to the audiobook of Chasing Harry Winston by Lauren Weisberger, who is the author of The Devil Wears Prada. I said there weren't any books in this wrap up that I really hated. That's not true because this book is, um, yeah, it's a bag of shit. It's like so bad, <laughs> but it's not like aggressively bad. It's more like it's just so silly that you cannot take it seriously. The reason why I listen to the audiobook is that I actually used to like this book when I was younger, when I was like 13. I really liked it or like not really liked it, but I thought it was fun. Maybe overall like a general plot of this book. Um, Chasing Harry Winston is about three uh, friends who are living in New York. So three women who are 29 years old and basically the entire book is about them freaking out because they're 29 years old and when they're 30, basically their life is going to end apparently. They're all about getting married and having babies and you know um, that they're supposed to do that because they are already so old and whatever and just struggling with that, I guess. It's just this book is so superficial and so silly and so not to be taken seriously. But overall, actually, it was also sort of enjoyable to listen to that because it was just so, so not what I would like to read now. But I loved it when I was younger. The funniest thing about it is that these three women are going crazy because they are turning 30. Like that's all or something. <laughs> it's just hilarious. And overall, I gave it two stars because it's a bad book, but... Yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's not a book that you need to take seriously. Then I also, really quick, I did a reread of a book um, that is from a Dutch author and that is written in Dutch. So only Dutch people can read it. But that is Focus aan uit by Mark Tichelaar. And this is sort of like a self-help book, but it's all about focus and um, how you can work the best and how you can take breaks. And it's just very uh, motivating. And that's why I read it to help me going with school. I really love it. It's sort of a book that always makes me feel more productive. I don't really have anything more to say about it because I've already talked about it before, but it's a book that I just really like to reach for when I need a bit of motivation. And this one is just perfect. It has so many very useful tips 
for when you're working on school or whatever. So yeah, I also did a reread of that and that was four out of five stars. And then for my next audiobook, I decided to listen to The Taming of the Queen by Philippa Gregory. And this book tells the story of Catherine Parr, who was the sixth and final wife of King Henry VIII. If you know me a little bit, then you know that I absolutely love all the wives of King Henry VIII. I love Tudor history, so I love to uh, read a Philippa Gregory book every once in a while. Catherine Parr has always been like my least favorite wife, sort of like the least interesting, uh, which isn't fair because with this book I learned so much about her that I didn't know. She was actually a really interesting woman uh, with so many things that she has done and I love to hear more about her story and what she did and you know how her life was. I do feel like the book was a bit dragged out and um, just with all of the Philippa Gregory books, sometimes it likes to build tension when, like, when you know historical events, then you know that the tension is just, it doesn't mean anything because you know how her life is going to go. And sometimes it was a bit overly dramatic in its writing. Um, but overall, I found it very interesting to learn more about Catherine Parr. And I just love, as I mentioned before, to read a Philippa Gregory book every once in a while. And I gave The Taming of the Queen 3 out of 5 stars. Then another book that I finished in November is The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. So I read this as part of the Bonathon Readathon organized by Ashley from A Frolic True Fiction. Uh, where we read the three existing or like the three books that are currently published in the Bone Season series. This is a sci-fi fantasy semi-dystopian uh, taking place in a different version of our world book where some people are clairvoyant but it's illegal to be clairvoyant and our main character Paige is a clairvoyant and she's very active in the underworld crime scene in London. There's really so much more to the story than just that but that's all I can say without spoiling things so we're going to keep it at that. I had the bone season on my TBR for a while but I wasn't sure if it was my thing but I ended up be really liking it way more than I expected to. I didn't think I would hate this book, but I also wasn't 100% sure about it. But overall, I was actually really pleased with it. The story was so interesting. I loved all the characters. It was such an epic adventure. I love the sort of clairvoyant powers. It's not really magic, but you know, I do love the magic system, if that makes sense. But overall, I thought it was such an engaging story. There was action. There was more slow parts. I think that's the main complaint about this book, that it's a bit long and sometimes it feels a bit slow. But I personally didn't even mind that. This book really put me back in the fantasy reading mood. It is not perfect, it's not um, the best book ever, but it's just so enjoyable and I was so surprised by it because I didn't know if I would like it, but I ended up liking it very much. And I gave it four out of five stars and I cannot wait to pick up the second and third book in the series. Then my next read was a historical fiction and it's The Familiars by Stacey Halls. This is the story of Fleetwood, um, a young girl in the 16th century who is married and she has been pregnant three times before, but she lost all those babies. And now she's pregnant for the fourth time, but she finds a secret letter written to her husband that says that she wouldn't survive another pregnancy. But then she finds a new midwife named Alice Gray, uh, who seems to be able to help her. But then also there are these witch trials going on. And that's sort of the idea of the book. It's very much about the witch trials um, in this uh, time period. So I personally thought that all the characters were made up they were all complete fiction, but that's not true because all the characters in this book or in this book actually really existed. Fleetwood was a real woman. Alice Gray was a real person. Um, there's only, there's no evidence that they actually knew each other, but um, the witch trials were actually happening during this time. So this book takes true characters and true events and forms it into a fictional story. So yeah, I don't know. I really thought it was fake, but actually it was real and I really liked that. So with this book, I love to read about a historical fiction book uh, about a time period that I don't really know that much about and that I don't really read that many historical fiction books about. That is what made it interesting. But then also what I didn't really like about it is that this book felt a bit like it was written like a young adult. And I really wished it was written more like an adult novel. I don't know, it's hard to explain but it felt a bit too simple to me at times. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but with this story, I just wished it would have been a bit more adult, a bit more, I don't know, a bit more 
like that, if that makes sense. On the plus side, I will say that this is a very easy book to get into if you're not usually into historical fiction. It's easy to get through, so um, if you want to try it out, I would definitely recommend it. So the story and the characters were awesome. The writing style wasn't my personal favorite, and I gave the book uh, 3 out of 5 stars. I feel like I've been talking forever, but let's get on with it. The next book that I finished in November was Between Sisters by Chris and Hannah. This book tells the story of Megan and Claire, two sisters, who uh, had this fight or this sort of rift when they were younger and uh, that still hasn't fully healed and they're still quite estranged from each other. But now Claire is getting married so that sort of brings the opportunity to maybe bring them closer together. So Between Sisters is your typical Kristen Hanna book. I feel like all Kristen Hanna books apart from The Nightingale and The Great Alone, those books are I don't know, I think better, but all those other Chris and Hannah books are sort of the same. They are always very dramatic. They are always about family or friends, or at least about love. They are always super easy to read. Um, I always find them really enjoyable, but also it, they tend to be a bit over dramatic. I like to compare these books to fast food because they're so enjoyable, they're fast. Um, you have a really good time reading it, but they're never going to be my all-time favorites after that. Between Sisters was exactly the same. Uh, I was flying through it, I had such a good time reading it. I loved the dramatics and uh, I do love stories about sisterhood and, you know, estranged sisters who come closer together. But it's not going to be like an all-time favorite book of mine after that. Um, I don't know, it's just, it's a really interesting read and I really had a good time reading it throughout all the fantasy that I read this month. This one was very welcome to sort of, you know, switch it up a bit with genres and everything. So that's what I liked about it. I think this is definitely one of my, um, I don't know, more favorite Kristen Hannah books apart from The Great Alone and The Nightingale. If you want to have an easy read, this is definitely one I would recommend and I gave it 3.5 out of five stars. Next up, I have a book that I read on my e-reader. I don't have a physical copy of it, but it's The Surgeon by Tess Gerritsen. Gerritsen? I don't know how to pronounce it, but yeah, The Surgeon. This is a book about a serial killer who um, kills women and then mutilates them with a lot of precision. So that's why he's called The Surgeon, because he obviously knows a lot about uh, surgical things. And then we have detectives Moore and Rizzoli. Rizzoli? Um, who are going to try to find the killer. And then there's also Catherine, who was a victim of a previous serial killer, um, but who survived. And she seems to be another new target within this case. So I really felt like reading a thriller. And overall, I thought the surgeon was okay. The story was definitely interesting, very gruesome and, you know, very dreadful. And there's definitely a lot of horrific stuff happening with these crimes, which I love because that's what I love to read about if I want to read like a good thriller. But what I didn't like about this book were the characters because most of the characters were so annoying and not likable. So detective Jane Rizzoli is like this woman detective in a man's world and um, I think you're supposed to root for her, but I just mostly found her so annoying and so self-centered and so egocentric and it's just... I did not like her whatsoever. She was so annoying to read about. I really could not root for her because she was just such a horrible person in my opinion. And then Detective Moore was just so bland, so nothing. And um, I think my favorite character was Catherine, but even she wasn't amazing. So I think the story was good. The writing was okay, but the characters were just ugh, really not that fun to read about. So overall, I would say it's like 2.5 stars out of 5 stars. And then the final book that I finished in November was Heretics Anonymous by Katie Henry. This book is a young adult contemporary. It's about a boy named Michael who is an atheist, but he's being sent to this very strict Catholic school. And there he finds these sort of... Um, society or like club called Heretics Anonymous where there are more people who don't fit in with the strict Catholic teachings. So like a boy who is uh, Jewish, a girl who wants to be a priest which is not allowed in like the Catholic church, so things like that. And then the book is just, this was such a fun interesting read. I listened to the audiobook and I really loved it. What I liked about it is to First of all, see the experience of an atheist at a Catholic school because I'm an atheist, I don't really have a religion. So it was so interesting to read about that and to identify with him. But what I also loved about this book is that it's not anti-Catholic. It's actually really much about all sorts of faiths and all sorts of people and how we should all respect each other and, uh, you know, be respectful of each other's views and religions. 
and it's very much about learning about each other and I really loved it. I found it so interesting. So as I said, I'm an atheist, but I did go to a Protestant middle school. Not a very strict one, but we did read in the Bible and such, so I have a bit of knowledge about the Bible. So I do really love to learn about other religions and their stories and their views. And I feel like even if you don't believe in those religions, um, even if you don't believe in the Bible, there are still a couple of, um, you know, good stories in there with morals about loving each other and caring for each other. And what I also like is that this book isn't claiming that a religion is flawless. It's very much aware of flaws of religions. Um, but that mostly there isn't just one way with a religion. There's multiple ways and everyone can, uh, should be welcome in that. And yeah, it's just, I really love this book. It's so interesting. It's so something different from what I would normally read. But I really loved Heretics Anonymous and I gave it four out of five stars. It's definitely a book that I would recommend. Um, it's a very good one. It's a very interesting one. I think one of my favorite contemporaries of the year. So we made it. This is finally it for my November reading wrap up. Damn, I feel like I've been talking forever, but um, yeah, it's, it was a really good reading month. I read a lot. I had a lot of thoughts about all the books that I finished. And I really hope December will be an amazing reading month as well. Of course, December is always busy. So um, I just hope I can squeeze in as much reading as possible. Um, wherever I can. And yeah, I'm so excited for the final month of the year. It's going to be amazing. I'm so excited for the Christmas season and everything. Yeah, I cannot wait for it. I just love this time of the year so much. So this was it now for my reading wrap up and this video. And if you like this video, please go subscribe or maybe give it a thumbs up or share it or, you know, whatever you want, because it would really help my channel. And as always, I would really appreciate it. And then hopefully I will see you again very soon in my next video. Bye.